Welcome to Meal Kenny with Think Multifamily. Today, we're going to talk to you about step five, driving by the property. Mark? All right. So, driving by the property. So, is this driving by the property or is it parking your car, getting out, walking around? Which one? It is called drive by for a reason. Yeah. So, it is. And we know a lot of people will say, hey, we're going to go buy a property. I'm going to go into the leasing office, pretend I'm a insurance broker or something along those lines and look at the property and do that. We don't do that. Uh, one, it's not true. You're not um, doing that. You're actually touring it. A couple other points is the broker and seller don't want you doing that, right? So they're going to be upset with you if you do that. So don't do that. Uh, we have a recent example with a, a guy in our group that was, he's from Israel actually, but he was in Atlanta and this was a week, week and a half ago. Right. And he was doing a drive well he was supposed to be doing a drive by <laughs> he didn't though he ended up parking his car and was filming and literally a tenant uh came in and trapped him in uh with his car Yikes. and um wasn't very happy for whatever reason so i'm not sure what that tenant was doing why he was so, so upset about it right but reality is it's a drive by for a reason so you want to look at certain things so one thing you want to look at is going to be you know during the daytime right why does it matter during daytime what are you looking for one thing that I'd be looking for during the day is to see how many cars are still sitting in the parking lot. Um, why that matters is we tend to like to buy properties where our tenants are actually working. If a majority of the cars are still sitting in the parking lot, that could be a potential problem. It increases more wear and tear on the property. Maybe you're dealing with more people who are out of work and you start have to, you have to question, are you going to be uh, paid rent? Yeah, and you're looking for, we've been at properties, we've, we've bought a lot of different types of properties, let's just say that. Right. Some, some better than others. We've been, uh, you know, we've seen drug transactions go down, we've yes. seen prostitution, <laughs> tra if transaction, if you call it that, going down at a property. So, um, yeah, you want to see who's around there, are people congregating around, are they on balconies, what do they look right. like, clientele-wise, things like that. But daytime... Um, and you get a better visual too, right? right. Physical visual of the, of the property that you just sure. can't see during during the nighttime. So, how about nighttime? Why would you want to go down and look at it during night? Well, I think you would want to see at nighttime. One, you could kind of see well, are all the cars, everybody con coming back at the same time from work? You can kind of see maybe safety reasons. Are there security lights, security cameras? What kind of activity is happening at night? We talked about during the day. If those kinds of activities are happening in the middle of the day, what kind of activities are happening at night where they think they're not going to be seen? Yeah, and you want to see kind of the lighting and different aspects of it. You get a different feel. Uh, you, we know someone, um, Sean in our group, that was, he was telling me he was going to go look at a property at night. It was in, it's in, the, in the Dallas area, a little bit rougher area. And he, he said he's going to kind of, you know, drive in there. And he ended up, he was doing a live while he was driving, and with me anyways, and said, uh, uh, I'm not even going to stop. I'm driving right by because it doesn't look real, real safe. So you get a different vibe you right too, during right. nighttime. So that's why you want to look at it during nighttime. Um, how about like roads, traffic? So if you're buying a property, it's really good if you can be uh, on a busy road. We have properties where there's you know 50, 60 thousand cars a day that go by that road, and other properties you know, it's kind of hidden a little bit, right? right? So you want to kind of see the traffic flow and things like that. And why is that? Why is it um, important to be on a high traffic road? Yeah, it's just going to get the drive-by traffic. I mean, we've we've gone places, whether it's houses or whether it's apartments, uh, even for ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Or a car dealership or whatever. If it's hidden, not on a major road, um, you're not going to see it just driving by. So more traffic coming by there, more people, less money you have to spend on marketing, right. uh, things like that. So what's the next one? The next one of something that we look at during the daytime would be curb appeal. Um, we want to be checking out at the landscaping. Is it kind of sparse? How much landscaping um, budget do you need to plan for to make it more curb friendly? Um, when I drive by a property, I want to look and see, does, is it inviting? Is the, are the gates um, working? Are they painted? Are they not painted? Um, just how much money are you going to be having to spend on curb appeal, right? Yeah. And it's okay if it's not bad, you know, if it, if it is bad, I'm sorry. Like we bought a property in North Dallas and you come out of the leasing office, you come down this one, you know, kind of walkway and you turn right to go to the, the model. And when you're doing that, 
literally it was, you know, a couple of little pieces of grass there. The rest was dirt. Right. Um, you walk down there, it had um, six or seven AC units on your left, just visible. Right. It had a vending machine right there on your right. And this is the, the you know, the track you're going to, to the, to, uh, to the, to the model. model, right? It doesn't look good. So we spent about $32,000 just in that one area, yeah. um, putting an irrigation system, uh, grass, flowers. We put um, horizontal fencing on the left side to cover up the HVAC units. We got right. you know vending machine, we moved over somewhere else and things like that. So it doesn't mean it's bad if there's not good curb appeal, but at the end of the day, you have to realize that you're gonna be spending money to do that. In some cases, it's it's a fair bit of money to, uh, like this was a small section, we spent $32,000. We decked it out nicely because that's what everyone sees as soon as they pull up. That's what everyone sees as they walk to the model and things like that. So. Um, other things you might want to look at. Google Maps. So if the property is kind of further away from you, not really convenient to go out and just drive by initially, you want to pull up the property using Google Maps. Check it out. You can pull up even Google Earth, kind of see what's around the property, right? Yeah. Some of those uh, visuals are older too, but mm -hmm. it gives you a good idea, especially if you're familiar with the area and it shows you kind of how close it is to major highways and, and things like that as well. Um, other things, schools. So if you have a community where there are a lot of kids, if it's close to a school, especially if it's walking distance to a school, that's right. huge. Um, some cases you might have a property right across from a school. It's, it's a really good um, advantage to you to have that. Now, a lot of properties aren't that close, but knowing that something you want to look at um, is good to know right. that. For sure. What else? We talked about this one before. <laughs> we have. <laughs> Um, do you have a chiller on the property versus if, is it individually metered? Do you want to yeah, tell our so audience what a chiller is? For those is? that you know didn't hear the horror story before about chillers, chiller basically just think of it as one device heating and cooling all units. So we have a you know a 208 unit property in Dallas that has a chiller. It's the only property we own that has a chiller. Uh, that went down um, July, part of August for a three week period of time. Um, so tenants, we had to put AC units and things like that, and the city was on our on our back to get it resolved, and it just took a long time to get it resolved, frankly. Um, it's also the the plumbing under it, right? which can cost literally hundreds of thousands of dollars if you have to replace all the plumbing. So again, doesn't mean it's a bad investment, doesn't mean you shouldn't necessarily look at it if you're open to a chiller, but you wanna, you'll see that. Usually it'll be in, a, in like an offering memorandum, which we'll talk about as well, like in step four, um, that would tell you whether it's chiller or individually metered. But um, if you don't have that information, you can tell by driving by, are there eight, you know, HVAC units sitting out or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding is if you see a property with a chiller and you want to convert it over to indi individually metered units, it can be quite costly. So you need to definitely add that cost into your analysis if that's what you're seriously yeah, considering. It's, it's thousands, yeah. And yeah. then just a pure condition, you know, the is it, stucco, is it brick, um, is it you know wood siding, is it, is it vinyl siding, um, and the condition of that, uh, does it need to be, a lot of times you might have to spend money on things um, that can cost a lot and they really don't, they don't really add a lot to the property. So if there are certain things like the roofs, you can probably get a visual, you can't really necessarily probably tell exactly on a roof, uh, if you're not a roofer, like how good or bad they are. If but they're pitched, you can get a visual. If they're flat, visual. you can't really see the roofs on a driveway. That's driver. right. So don't climb up on the roof trying to, <laughs> trying to figure it out either. Uh, but you kind of get an idea as far as parking lot, um, the paint, the doors, uh, just things like that. So the balconies, lots of times we'll see balconies that are rough. We have a property in, in Beaumont that we bought and the poles holding up the balconies. I mean, you literally could just go in there, no joke, and, and push the poles. Yeah. Um, they were not really even attached. So safety uh, hazard as well. So right. the, the overall condition, again, you're driving by it, right? You're not stopping yet. Right. So another one to me, I want to consider is clientele. So, right. you know, when you go buy a property, you're going to have, you know, kind of, we talked about ABC properties. If mm -hmm. you remember, you're going to okay. usually have higher income, medium income and low income. And there's nothing wrong with any of those. We have bought, right. you know, in all those different um, scenarios. But when you go driving by the property, you have people that are either working a lot, right, right and they're probably not there, 
or you see, you know, maybe work trucks and people are like, hey, doing doing actual physical work and labor and things mm -hmm. like that, or the working class, which is fine. Right. Um, and then you have people that you maybe it's more, it looks like, hey, maybe these people aren't working, they look a little bit more, um, uh, maybe some criminal activity happening. We've actually seen it, experienced that even driving by property. Yeah. So um, it's something to consider. It doesn't mean it's a bad investment. It doesn't mean it's a bad property. You might think, well, I can go in there and kind of change the clientele um, out as well. And I would say you can do that. Uh, it takes a long time and it can be a long process. It might take you longer than you think. And end of the day, um, if the properties next door are kind of all the similar or the same as what your property is, then you're going to need to buy multiple properties probably to change really the clientele. So just keep that in mind as you're basically driving by the property and consider that um, before you move forward. Right. Another thing that I like about observing the clientele is um, you might want to start looking at the different type of amenities that either the property has or could have and add that into your budget based on your clientele. So if you have a working class and, and it's family oriented, maybe they need playgrounds, maybe they need pavilions and grills. Maybe you don't want to add additional places where people congregate because there's already too much crime on the activity, um, too much crime happening on the property. So those are also different things to consider when you're driving by the property. Yeah, we had it. We had an example of a property where original plan was to put in grills and things like that, and then we had a lot of people congregating, um, you know, together, right? And sometimes that's that's not always good. If it's productive, it is. If it's not, and, and it's it was not. a property that we already knew that there was kind of heavier crime, crime on. So we decided not to put the grills in that, that particular uh, property. And But yeah, just kind of consider that before you move forward on the deal. Yes. What else? How many restaurants are near the property? Um, places that your tenants might like to frequent? Yeah, shops, restaurants. So we lived in a walkable community. So we Loved could walk. It. Yeah, it was it was uh, it was great. We could walk to shops. We could walk to restaurants. We ate way too much pizza. <laughs> I know we, we were doing that. We would. That was our default. Like you know, five days a week, let's go eat pizza right. instead. Um, but it's something. It's an advantage, right? If you're close to different things, people don't have to get in a car. And then other things like a church um, that can be attractive to uh, tenants as well. Saying, okay, well, I can. I'm close to a church. I can walk to church. Um, kind of depends where you're at, where you're looking. What else? Um, how easy is the property to find? Um, more importantly for me, how easy is it to find the um, leasing office? The leasing office. Oh, yeah. dear Lord, we've driven by properties before, even just the drive-by when we can actually drive around the property. We've had to drive around several times just trying to find out where the leasing office was. So if we ended up moving forward with that property, we knew that was one instant change that we could make. Yeah, I can tell you that tenants will get, prospective tenants will get very frustrated if they can't even figure out where your leasing office is. Um, and they're driving around, there's no signage or anything like that. So keep that in mind. That's an easy fix though, right? That's Something for we can sure. fix, yes. so that's good. Uh, what else? Parks. Do you have parks on your property or do you have parks nearby? We have a property in the Dallas area that it doesn't have any parks per se on the property, but the city is paying for a park within really short walking distance from the property. So that is a benefit to our tenants and to us. Yeah, we have one right uh, in North Dallas. Uh, yeah. Again, that you, you go to the property, there's this huge park, it's shaded, everything like that. The city pays for it, so that's great. We're not having to pay for that amenity, um, but that's, uh, that's something we take prospective tenants too. We actually have a golf cart on that property because it's actually really long as far as getting down there. But we'll take them down there so they can kind of see the park. And people that have kids in particular, that's a very you know attractive type of thing. We know when we used to take our kids to the park, it was, um, we had one, not not walking distance, unfortunately, um, but it was close, we get in our car. But if you can walk to a park, it's great. That's right. Uh, and then we talked about this one, right? That's right. Don't talk to the staff or the tenants when you're just doing the drive-by. The reason being is most often the staff and the tenants don't know the properties for sale. What could happen is if you're going and talking to tenants or talking to the, um, the staff at this point is the staff might kind of put like red flags up like, oh no, the property's for sale. I need to go find a new job right now. Or the tenants, those tenants who understand what happens when a property goes up for sale is rents often increase. 
So they might start leaving. So it's going to create more of an unstable property before you even buy the property. Yeah, even if the, the staff does know it's for sale, reality is work the proper structure and in, in plan, right? You have a broker, let's assume you have a broker in this case that has a deal under, um, they have a list, the listing, right? Mm -hmm. You want to work through them, right? Don't try to go around them. I can tell you it's a small world. You know, they're probably going to hear about it. They're going to be frustrated with you and say, what are you doing? Um, first of all, you don't even have a tour scheduled. Why are you getting out of your car, talking to people, uh, things like that. Um, it just, it's really important. Don't do it. Um, it's your choice if you want to. We never do it, um, but we will drive by. And you can drive by closely and you gotta get a, a good look and things like that. But while you're trying to figure out, hey, does it look close to what I thought it was gonna look like? You know, I use kind of the example where maybe, I don't, you know, I would, I would not have to date right now. Maybe you're dating and you see a picture of a girl and then you actually go meet her and you're like, hmm, picture looks a little bit different than what she looks like in person. Good or bad, probably worse, right? Right. Same with the property. You get a offering memorandum from a broker. You're you're looking at it. You see pictures like, yeah, it looks pretty nice. And you go to the property like, wow, like what happened? It's like, is this even the, the same. same property that is in the pictures? So it's one of those things. That's what you're trying to do. Figure out, okay, how bad or how good is the property compared to what I thought it was going to be? And based on that, do my assumptions change? If I thought it was going to be a $3,500 unit rehab, uh, is it going to be $5,000 now? And you might say, well, how do I gauge that? You'll get good at gauging what it costs for that. If the interior, if the exterior is completely, you know, not taken care of, chances are, not always, right? But right. chances are the interior is not taken care of as well. If the exterior is well taken care of, that's really where the big ticket items are. The roof, right? Mm -hmm. uh, parking lot, uh, things like that, exterior of the, of the building. Those are big ticket items a lot uh, harder for you to predict what it's going to cost to repair right. versus interiors if they say, well, hey, the interiors haven't been upgraded and you're going to do a light rehab and it's going to be $3,500 a unit. That's pretty easy to, to determine. So, right. so that's uh, kind of the drive-by. That's great. So that's all we have on step five, driving by the property. We would love to stay connected with you. You can stay connected with us by checking out our website at thinkmultifamily.com or check us out on Facebook. Bye for now. Talk soon.